Very excited. All the way from Sedona, Arizona. The lovely Phyllis Voren. Phyllis Voren, and he's my love child. Hello, Flagstaff! Hello, Sedona! Hello! Well, I think we already established I'm not 25. Woo! But in cat years, I'm only 14. Ah. Yeah. And, and, I've got the body of a 40-year-old woman who's in terrible shape. <laughs> now, you guys would probably be very surprised to find out how much prejudice there still is against senior citizens outside where the shops are. I heard a woman tell her friend, old people have a smell. Well, sure we do. Mine is beer and marijuana. <laughs> That was a test joke, it's a good crowd. Okay, okay. But before I really get into, I like to establish where I'm coming from, guys, okay? Because I'm on the cusp of French lace black panties. And depends. Okay, so, see, it's not so much I'm aging as my infrastructure is breaking down. For instance, I just signed up for Kundalini Yoga. Why? I thought it was Kundalingus Yoga. <laughs> I don't see so well, I don't hear so well. You should have seen their faces when I showed up in my crotchless pants. <laughs> and, and then, and just last month, a friend took me to a Lottie Da charity event. Well, I'm so restless and fidgety. So he leans over and whispers to me, will you please sit on your hands and stay in your place? But I thought he said, will you please pull down your pants and sit on my face? <laughs> so I did. I'm very codependent. <laughs> now, now, I gotta tell you guys this. Recently, I was sick for a while and I lost a lot of weight. Okay, this country loves skinny. But, I mean, I mean, olive oil has more curves than me. But I oh, did find, oh. You look great. <laughs> Are you gay? No, if anybody, just tell me your sex and I'm, I'll, I'll be the same. Okay. <laughs> no, no, but something good came out of it. Because I found that I can make a new funny sound. Check this out. Okay, now you probably can't hear it in the back, but it's the sound of like a wet towel slapping against a naked body. <laughs> that, my friend, is the sound of two boobs flapping. <laughs> Sexy, huh? <laughs> well, let me give you a little background, okay? I, I grew up in a typical Jewish family. <laughs> You're cheering the Jews? I'm, I'm fucking moving here. Grass and Jews. Listen, let me tell you, I put the Jew in marijuana. So you know that. <laughs> anyway, I grew up in a typical Jewish family. My grandmother's last words were, take a sweater. <laughs> and uh, I never really got to know my mom. When I was just a little kid, she said she had a surprise for me. It was a restraining order. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a fucking sympathetic group. Oh my God. Went to Hebrew Union College, studied comparative suffering. Oh, my first job. My first job out of school was a gym. I was in New York working for the Jewish Museum. I was the curator of a new exhibit, Famous Foreskins. <laughs> well, we had Einstein's, we had Freud. We even had the guy who wrote, a Mary, what is it? Leonard Bernstein, his was shaped like a little yeah. cheek left. <laughs> Well, most of my life I've been a nonprofit, not by choice. <laughs> you see, see, I was 
raised without one clue how the real world works. When I was a teenager, I almost lost all of my savings when I tried to deposit them into a sperm bank. <laughs> you know. But what really makes me laugh is people think that performers that were really confident people. Not true. I am so sensitive. If you're rude to me, I get a yeast infection. <laughs> no, this is a, this is a, such a good crowd. I feel like I can really let you know. I, I found out I did have a yeast infection. So I call all my friends in California, because they're into home remedies. And my first friend said I should douche with yogurt. <laughs> my next friend, she said, and no, not eat it either. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> now, douche with yogurt. I called another friend. She said, I, I should douche with buttermilk. My third friend said, baking soda. Well, I tried all three. And now, I feel like I'm going to give birth to a pound cake. <laughs> I, I, I'm just a terrible influence on myself. If I had a... If I had a signature perfume, it would be called Eau de Angst. And, and I tend to be paranoid. Oh, but I'm getting better because now I'll ask someone, are you mad at me? And usually they say, I don't even know you. <laughs> One time I turned myself into the FBI because I was suspicious of my thoughts. They ordered me to to stay a hundred yards away from myself. <laughs> but, but, you know, my biggest problem is depression. Last year, it got so bad, I tried Suiciders Anonymous, but I don't know. Every time I went, there were less and less people there. <laughs> I belong to a lot of self-help groups. Um, last week in my Overachievers Anonymous, a guy asked me for a blowjob. So I vacuumed his entire apartment. Okay. You know, there's so... I, I'll wait. No, there's, there are so many things in life I know are great, but I don't take part in. Like hiking. You guys are real outdoor guys here, right? But it's not, it's not because I don't love nature. And I have deep respect for the great outdoors. I will not even leave my house unless I'm properly dressed, I have adequate water, and I use sunscreen. Only then will I go out the door and pick up the mail. Sometimes I take a compass. <laughs> no, I just, I hate exercise. I don't even like standing. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, you know how they always have those 10K races for breast cancer and AIDS. I'm waiting for a 1K ramble and nap time <laughs> with a bed and breakfast at the end. <laughs> so, so everybody here, I bet you, are you most of you guys go to gym? Go to a gym? Uh, any gym? Come on, admit yeah. it. What are you yeah. fucking? I'm not asking you if you're a conservative. Raise your fucking hand if you go. No. I oh, okay. And do you do the what's the one the the, the walking walk? What's that called? Yeah. Do yeah, you do that one? Yeah. Do you guys know that outside there are thousands of miles of paths you can walk on yeah. and fucking get somewhere? Yeah. You could have walked to Morocco by now. The last time I was in a gym was in high school. They expected us to leap over these fake horses and climb these big ropes. Man, when I fucking saw that, I told them I got period cramps. <laughs> okay, and I stayed out. Lucky for me, we had rotating teachers, so every week I got period cramps. Never had to climb that fucking rope. <laughs> I have a lot of trouble with machines. Oh my God. My alarm clock just broke. So I had to ask my neighbor to, to bump into my parked car at 7 a.m. to set off the alarm. <laughs> oh, and 
my my um, mass. What do you call it? The the the, the, the oven. I'm a little stoned. Can you tell? No, okay. The uh, the the fast. What are those machines? When you get old, microwave. you lose words. Microwave. Yes. Microwave. What kind of machine? The what? guy for that okay the microwave I can only use one button add 30 seconds so if my dinner isn't ready in 30 60 90 seconds it's Captain Crunch for me so anyway but this is the worst okay I put my vibrator on auto reverse I ended up buffing my teeth um, yeah, you, you know what part of this is? I came up in the 50s, you guys. This is even before pantyhose. We wore girdles, garters, pointy bras. You got undressed, you had lines, welts everywhere. Husbands didn't have to batter you. Your underwear did. But if you lived with someone and you weren't married, Oh, big scandal, you were obviously a whore. If you had a baby out of wedlock, ah, you were scandalized, nothing, ruined for life. Okay, but then came the 60s, and things changed a little. Now, I was living in New York near Central Park. Central Park was hippie central. I'd go into the park to check things out. Oh, nice hat. Want to fuck? Yes, it was a wonderful decade. <laughs> a little slow on the uptake there. <laughs> you know, but we all come onto this scene so naive. Uh, the dating scene, the sex scene. Oh, okay, I was so naive. I thought the worst thing you could do with your boyfriend was wear an outfit twice. Couldn't figure out how people got married. Who had that many clothes? <laughs> I mean, if you had told me when I was eight years old, when I grew up, I'd have a man's pee pee in my mouth. When I wouldn't even eat an apple, my best friend took a tiny bite out. I would have hung myself. Girls, did we know how boring hand jobs were? <laughs> Guys, please leave the TV on. I learned a lot from my Chinese high school boyfriend, Wow Hung. <laughs> Thank you, previous comic. <laughs> Well, um, well, he was a great student. When he finally located my G-spot, he highlighted it. <laughs> commitment. Oh, my God. I was Before I was married, I was so afraid of commitment, I didn't buy toilet paper. I only bought it one roll at a time. Look at my hand. <laughs> But, uh, and this is a pretty, cr this is a pretty savvy crowd. Guys, you know that size doesn't matter. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm here to tell you, size does not matter unless you want to have intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, this is a good factoid. The average man's penis is twice the length of his thumb. Yeah. So uh, if, he, if, he, if he's wearing gloves, girls, okay. Now I've been looking at, I've been observing penises for 70 years, and I'm still fascinated by them. They're not beautiful, but they're entertaining. Each one has its own personality. Girls, girls, back. Me up when guys walk around naked. <laughs> all that bobbing and bouncing. It's a fucking puppet show. <laughs> 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 
Last night, my husband does one of these. I said, what? He said, I'm rearranging my balls are sticking to my penis. <laughs> Guys, is this a big problem? You never heard of talc or pan? <laughs> Did you ever wonder if one of the balls is in charge? <laughs> like the alpha ball. Move over, you crap in my style. You move over, you're sticking to me. Sometimes, sometimes in literature, the battle of the sexes is seen as a real battle when men and women have sex. And I can understand this. Because when my husband comes, he looks like he's in pain. <laughs> He doesn't look like he's in ecstasy. He looks like he's having his fingernails pulled out. <laughs> so next time we had sex and he was coming, I looked up and yelled, smile! <laughs> it didn't end well. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm anti-penis. By the way, what is the plural? Penises. Do you know the penis? Right, right, right. Cactus, cacti. Right? Okay. I hope I'm not, I hope I don't sound hostile. I love I wrote a poem called Ode to a Penis. I sing to the old penis. I think you are a genius. <laughs> I love when you're between us. <laughs> I'll always be your friend, even when you bend. <laughs> oh, that's never happened to you? Okay. Now, I am such a sentimentalist. You know that little ridge at the end of the, of the organ? Yeah. yeah. I call it the speed bump of love. <laughs> You'll tell that to someone. I know you will. <laughs> but, uh, no, I don't, I, I, to, towards the end, I didn't want to end, I wanted to say uh, a brief word about oral sex. <laughs> More? Okay. More! More! No, no, no. no. no, no. I admit, I, I, I like oral sex, but I look at myself, I'm old, how long can this last? So I decided to get a tattoo on my labia. If anybody doesn't know what labia is, raise your hand. Okay, I'm getting a tattoo on my labia, and it's going to say, best of eaten by 2018. <laughs> no, but I got to tell you, there's two sides to the story. Sometimes oral sex can, can be bad for your health. It can knock your neck out of joint. Ooh, that was a bad pun. It can knock your neck out of joint. You know how many people you see walking around with neck braces? It's not all from cars, you know. <laughs> That's why I call my husband's joint Whiplash Willie. Ooh, ooh. But it can even be life-threatening, oral sex. Not too many people know this, but it has happened. You're going along. Everything's swell. <laughs> then all of a sudden you get a hair in your throat. And you hear your cat making these cat ball noises. Cat hair ball noises. <laughs> then you remember you don't have a cat. <laughs> and you're making those noises. Well, sweetheart, at this moment, you're not thinking about sex. You're thinking about oxygen, rescue, tracheotomy. But I have another, I have to make another confession to you. I don't really love giving head blowjobs. It's not my fondest thing to do. I once, I once even wrote a protest song about it called, maybe for your birthday. <laughs> okay. 
But uh, I don't know what my time situation is. Can somebody, do you know how much time? Sing the birthday song. Sing the birthday song. No, I'm going to end with a question for you guys. There's a very astute crowd here, okay? Now, why can't you guys make some sounds during sex? Are we supposed to create the whole soundtrack? <laughs> Couldn't you at least cough? <laughs> whistle? Crack your knuckles? <laughs> and when you do come, would you please let us know? Uh, a tap on the shoulder? A fact? No, 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 I got it. A postcard. I've arrived. <laughs> Having wonderful time. Wish you were here. <laughs>